How do we say thank you to those who gave everything? How do we honor the men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom? We say thank you by remembering. Today, we honor our heroes. Lives given, not in vain, but with purpose. We stand grateful for their courage, their strength, and their resolve. For the fabric of America is stitched together by the thread of the brave. Today, we remember and we will never forget. Good morning. Good morning. In Romans we read, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, Memorial Day weekend. Start of summer! Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Oh, man. It's a start of summer. There's no school. <laughs> the teens would at least normally applaud. Oh. Well, let's, w- let's wake up. Let's stand up. Let's worship the Lord through music this morning. Would you stand and join us?
tell you what, there's so much we have to be grateful for. Man, what a beautiful week, right? This weather. God's been so good to us. I realized I was getting old again this morning. My wife does things to really help. Steve, could you hold this? (laughs) We've got a lot going on in church, and that's a great, great thing. And I just want to take a moment to pause and really focus on some of the things Several reasons. One, God's called us to serve, to reach our community, and to love others as Christ loved. Amen? Amen. In the next week, next Sunday, we're going to celebrate our graduates. Next weekend, there's a, a crossing over bridge event for the teen, those becoming teens. They just got done with school, so they become a part of the youth group for the summer. So uh, if you've got Children that are becoming teens, and you want them to be a part of that, see Pastor Harrison, see the announcements, Uh, that information is out there. And then on Sunday, we're going to honor all of our graduates, and those moving from that one phase to the next, whether it be uh, high school, college, those opportunities. And we want to honor them next week, so be sure to be here and be a part of that. (coughs) Excuse me. Next Sunday is also a very important Sunday and a great opportunity for we as a church to reach out. VBS starts next Sunday night, so we need kids. I don't know. You've got to be gentle with this, but work with the parents to steal them and bring them to church. Okay, make sure mom knows we don't need the police called, any of that kind of fun stuff, but bring the children out for VBS. And then you can stay and help volunteer. It would be a great way to serve. You can see Stephanie Bolt, uh, Heidi Johnson, just if you have any details about that. But VBS kicks off next week. So we want you to be here next Sunday evening and be a part of that. Uh, The care ministry continues. You've seen baskets. If there's someone that you know is going through a difficult time, they just need love done, whatever that is, you can drop it in there and our care ministry will take uh, that request and they will help follow up. You still do your part 
You love on them, but we will just support and also extend additional support and encouragement and love. Uh, Soul Sisters, Jubilee Farms coming up on June 27th. Be sure to be a part of that. So uh, we want you to be just another great opportunity for you to go minister with one another, encourage each other on the drive and be a part of that fun day. Uh, information is available. What you might not realize is we have a church website. We have a church Facebook page. All of this is in a size you can blow up and read much easier than I can read this. So I point you to those places. Be sure to be a part of that. And then a while back here, I want to just share something on the side. I was asked about the music we do on Sunday mornings. I probably know 10 to 20,000 different church songs. I take three to five on any given Sunday and we do them. I just pray about it. But what I was encouraged to do after our conversation was I've created a Spotify playlist. If you go to our church website, you go to the worship tab. There is a Spotify playlist. Spotify is a free app if you tolerate a commercial every 30 minutes. Uh, so that's what I get to do. Uh, but it's a great way that you can just be exposed to the songs we have historically done and we commonly do, as well as the stuff we'll be introducing uh, I've been using that for the band so we can listen to songs. But you know what the other thing it is? It's a great way for you to reconnect from Sunday to Sunday and bridge that gap with time of worship in your car, if you're sitting at home. It's a chance for you to just be surrounded by Christ's presence again through song. So I just wanted to point that out. You're welcome to grab that. If you have any trouble, uh, see me. Actually, see Brooke. She does much better with technology than I do. Uh, and she will help get you set up as well. Uh, but I just wanted to point that out because I, I feel God moving in our services each week. And I just feel that if we can carry that with us through the week, it will encourage our hearts, keep us close to him, and bring us back prepared and ready to worship the next Sunday. Would you stand and join us as we continue to sing uh, praises to his name.
God's so good. Amen. He's our firm foundation. Last September, I attended a rugged conference with Pastor Ben and Glenn Curry, and this song was introduced over Easter. We introduced it here. Words are so powerful. Whatever's going on in your life, give it to Christ. He's got this. He's got you. Amen.
this morning where's your heart do you have burdens you're carrying do you have a friend a family member someone that's carrying a burden the altars are always open and I do want to focus your prayer this morning on that I want you to give burdens to Christ this morning ran across this this week. When you enter his presence with praise, he, Jesus Christ is the he, he enters your circumstances with power. He takes it. We sent out notification this week. A couple hours after service last Sunday, Pastor Ben got a phone call. His dad had very unexpectedly passed away. Obviously, that was not news he was expecting. We praise the Lord that Pastor Ben had safe traveled on to Florida, spent some time with the family there, and he came back Thursday, and he left on his planned vacation with his family here. As I look back, as we've prayed for Pastor Ben, Around Easter, he lost a cousin his age, left a 17-year-old son. Three weeks ago, he lost an uncle, and now he's lost his father. My heart has a burden for him. I lean on him as my pastor every week to encourage me, to guide me. My heart has hurt this week, folks, for him. As you pray today, you're welcome to come to the altar and lift up your burdens, but I encourage you to lift him up this week that God will help him through grief. God will encourage him. God will give him that peace. We're going to sing one more song probably over the years become my absolute favorite hymn. It's a time I just reflect in how amazing God is. Amen? I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and I wonder how he could love me. I'm a sinner. I'm condemned and I'm unclean. But I get to sing how marvelous, how
comfort of your arms and your spirit. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just return to you today. We praise you for just the beautiful, beautiful weather through central Illinois this last week, Lord. Just summer has come and you've just turned the seasons once again with your glorious majesty and beauty. We thank you for that. Lord, we just praise you. We just praise you for how you're moving in this church. We praise you for the way that you've provided this week through so many unexpected things, Lord. We do lift up some burdens this morning, Lord. I lift up Pastor Ben and his family. So much loss that has just surrounded them lately, Lord. And shocking news to us, Lord, but here's what I rest assured in. You were not surprised, and you knew this day would be here. And we know, Lord, that we just pray a special blessing on Pastor Ben. 
Just draw him into your presence. Be that firm foundation he's leaning on. That when the rains have come and the winds have blown around him, Lord, you have just sustained him. You are the rock on which he's built this foundation. We praise you for that. Heavenly Father, I just lift up those in our congregation. I think of the Palmer family as Linda's been moved to hospice care. Thank you, Lord, for bringing the peace this week that you've brought to the family. Continue to be in that situation, Lord, and all that goes on. Lord, for our church and for the children's leaders, I just pray for their VBS preparations, Lord, for this upcoming week. Lord, just pull those final pieces together of the planning. Pull the volunteers. Just pull our preparation together that we are ready to just show your love and the message of salvation through VBS to the children. Lord, and I pray for each of us that we won't be shy and we'll be bold and we will invite those that live around us. We will invite those in this community, Lord, and we will reach out to draw those children in. Lord, we love you and we thank you for all that you've done for us. Just receive the praise and the glory of our offering of worship today to you. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to have Pastor Harrison come, and he's going to tell you a little bit about NYC, and he's going to pray for the offering. So, ushers, if you could come forward, take your places, and I'll just turn it over to him. Well, good morning. Are we awake this morning? I died just in case. Yes. God, we thank you for this morning. Uh, we thank you that we get to gather here. God, I just, I ask that you would be in this time of giving. God, that we would, uh, this morning, God, that, that we would give you our tithes and our offerings, God, and you would use it and you would bless it and you would multiply it. God, be in our giving this morning. Amen. All right, so, um, before we get going this morning, um, first off, I love being up here. I, I think it's fun. Uh, the first few times I was nervous, but now it's just fun and I'm excited. So when I asked you if you're awake this morning, um, for me, I spent all morning trying to figure out how to be awake this morning, how to be excited uh, to be here this morning, and I am excited to be here this morning. Uh, I'm just not used to getting up early. Uh, if you know me, normally I get up at like 10 o'clock, okay? Uh, and I like that. I like getting up at 10 o'clock. It's kind of nice, all right? So I'm not used to getting up early, but I'm here and I'm, I'm happy to be here. So... Before we get into what we're talking about this morning, I am going to talk about MWO and NYC, all right? And if you don't know what that is, then lucky for you, I'm going to explain it. So I'm going to ask Stefan Bladen, you, sir, there's a poster out there. Go grab that for me. The MWO poster. We'll just wait on him. (laughs) See if he comes back with the right one. It's the one by the doors. Big board. Yeah, big board. There you go. Come on up here, Stefan. Give it up for Stefan. <laughs> Just stand, stand right here for me. Hold that up. There you go. Thank you, Stefan. So, if you guys don't know what NYC is, it is this, it's Nazarene Youth Conference. And it is huge, huge event. It takes place every four years, all right? And it is awesome. This year we have over 10,000 teens, all right, gathering in one spot to worship and to praise God. How awesome is that? Like, that is so awesome. And we get to take some of our teens, and part of that is they do a, uh, a bring with project, okay? And that's what MWO is. MWO stands for Ministry with Others. And so as a church, not just as the teens going or as a youth group, but as a church, all of us, we get to take place in this. All right. Uh, Tampa Bay right now, because of the storms and all of that, they struggle to get um, basic toiletries. All right. And so this year for NYC, we are packing bags with the things that they need in Tampa Bay. And we're taking them with us and we're going to pass them out to Tampa Bay, to the people that need them. Okay. But again, this is not just the teens going. This is not just the youth group. 
but this is the church, okay? So I'm tasking you guys over the next month to go and buy this stuff, and we'll pack these bags, and we'll take these bags with us. Uh, the district has said that our goal is 10 bags per teen, okay? Uh, I think we have five or seven teens going. So our goal as a church, as I'm putting it, is 100 bags. I think it's doable. I think we could totally do it, all right? So there's this, and then here, let me see this for a second, Stefan. All right, and then, uh, you know how there were papers next to it? Can you go grab one of those? <laughs> Thanks, Stefan. But out there, I don't know if you guys saw this coming in, but this poster will be out by the doors. All right, this, this is what's needed. These are the things that are needed. And each bag will have one of each of these things, travel-sized items, in the bags. Uh, and so if you need to know, you can take a picture of this, or there's these lovely papers. Stephanie, she'll hold up the paper for me. There we go. There's these lovely papers that you can grab and you can take with you, all right? Um, I will let you guys know, I, I have bags already, uh, so you don't have to buy a bag. In fact, I have 100 things of toothpaste and 100 toothbrushes that have already been donated, so you don't even have to buy that, all right? But buy the stuff for these bags, pack these bags, and we're going to take them and we're going to pass them out in Tampa Bay, all right? Our teens are going to go to Tampa Bay with these bags and pass them out. So I encourage you guys to get the stuff. It's travel size stuff. It's cheap stuff, all right? A hundred bags, all right? Thank you, Stefan. You can go put that back now. Give it up for Stefan. All right, so again, I am super happy to be speaking. Um, it was already the plan for me to speak because Ben had planned this vacation a while back, uh, and now it's a much-needed vacation, and I'm happy to see them go, and it makes me even more excited to be up here, to be filling in for him. So I am ready to be here. I am excited. I'm full of energy. May maybe not as much energy as Tim, all right? But I'm getting there, all right? We're getting there. Um, and so this week, I'm continuing in the series. Uh, I've had enough time to prepare, prepare for this. I'm good. I'm continuing in the series of biblical leadership, all right? And I think we've got a slide of that, right? Yeah, biblical leadership, all right? Uh, if you don't know where we've been in this, Ben's already talked about this for three weeks, all right? First week, this was one of the verses he gave. Proverbs 4, 7. It says, wisdom is supreme. Therefore, get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. This was the first week. It was about being teachable. We have to be teacher, teachable to be biblical leaders, right? Um, we have to understand that there's never going to be a point where we know everything. There's never going to be a point where we can just go, yeah, I've been there. I've done that, right? We can't be the one-uppers, right? That was the first week. We have to be teachable. Second week, this was one of the verses. Luke 9, 23. This is Jesus. Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. We have to be attuned, right? This was the second week, to be attuned. We have to stay in God's word. We have to pick up our cross daily. We have to be in God's word daily because we have to be attuned to his will for our lives, right? We have to be attuned. That was the second week. And last week, this was the verse. 1 Corinthians 9.22, and I love this. To the weak I became the weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I think that this is such a powerful verse. And I think if we take this to heart, we will be changing lives, right? He says, I became the weak to minister to them right? I become who I'm ministering to to better minister to them. Last week was to be adaptable. We have to adapt to who we're ministering to, right? We have to change. We have to keep moving, right? And he says, to the weak I became the weak. I have become all things to all people to better minister to them. How powerful is that, right? Be adaptable. And so this week, um, this was all already planned out, all right? And so Ben comes up to me, and he says, hey, do you want to preach this Sunday? I said, yes, absolutely, I'll do it, right? And he said, okay, you have two options. You can continue in the series, all right, or you can do a random standalone message. And I said, oh, I would love to continue in the series. Like, 
Let's do it, all right? And he says, okay, so this week, what we're going to be talking about is to be tenacious, maybe. There it is, to be tenacious. And so I told him, I said, absolutely, I'll do it. Like, I'm good, let's do it. This was many, many weeks ago, all right? And so he told me this, and I come home, and I look at Bailey, and I go, so what's tenacious mean? <laughs> and it was like, well, I don't, I don't know. Like, I can infer what it means, and I've got an idea of what it means within the context that I normally hear it, but what does tenacious mean, right? And so I asked my brother. Uh, he's a theology, theology major at Olivet right now, and I asked him, what's tenacious mean? And he's like, isn't it normally, like, negative? And I was like, I don't think so, because we're called to be tenacious, apparently, so I don't think it's negative, right? He's a theology major at Olivet, and he couldn't even tell me what tenacious means, all right? So that's my job this morning, is to tell you, what does tenacious mean? What does it mean to be tenacious, all right? So if you know me, and I've done this already up here on a Sunday morning, uh, when I don't know a word, my favorite thing to do is to Google it for two reasons. One, it's easy, and also, it normally works out pretty well, all right? So here's the Google definition of tenacious for you. All right? Tenacious, not readily relinquishing a position, principle, or course of action. Determined. I said, okay, well, that doesn't really help me. Uh, and so I asked Ben. I was like, I'm supposed to talk about tenacity, what being tenacious means. I don't even know what it means. Okay, so he gave me a book that talks about tenacity. Well, kind of. The headers say tenacity, but then it doesn't mention the word throughout the rest of the chapter. And I'm like, okay. Um, and so, this book, this is what it says. To be tenacious, you need two things. You need two things, okay? You need perseverance, and you need passion. Perseverance and passion. So my thought was, okay, well now I have more words that I have to Google, right? Uh, I didn't, all of them. I do have a lot of Google definitions, but we'll get to those later, Okay. Perseverance and passion. And here's one of the quotes from the book, all right? One of my favorite quotes. People need a powerful why if they're going to be able to endure any how. So before we even talk about perseverance, before we even go over what perseverance means, we have to first figure out the passion. We first have to figure out the why, right? Because without a why, what's the point of perseverance? What's the point of persevering if we don't have a powerful reason, if we don't have a passion, right? So, first up, let's talk about passion, all right? So, Matthew 28, 19. I'm sure you've heard it. You've probably heard it a million times. I'm pretty sure Ben talked about it last week, okay? But Matthew 28, 19, it's Jesus. He says, "'Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations.'" baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, go. Go and disciple. Go and make disciples, right? Jesus is tasking us with this, but even still, why do we do this? Why? What's the point? What's our why? What is our passion, right? Why? Romans 5, starting in verse 6 says, for while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, get that, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more Shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. I know that some of this is kind of confusing, but the part that I want to pull for you, okay, is this right here, all right? 
Christ died for us while we were still sinners. A few weeks ago at youth group, I made the comparison that sin is inherently death, all right? Sin is death. They are the same, all right? And God is directly life, okay? He is life. God is what it means to live, right? He is what it means to have life. And what this is saying is that while we were still in death, while we were still living in death, while we were still dead to sin, God, the opposite of us, came and died for us. How huge is that? How important is that? Is that not something worth being passionate about? Right? That is our call. When Jesus says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, this is why we're going. This is the point. It's because there is something to be passionate about. Because God came. Jesus came and died for us while we were still living in death. While we were polar opposites from God, he came and saved us. And that is something to be passionate about, right? Let me give you another quote from this book. What ripens passion is the conviction that your work matters. So let me ask you guys, does your work matter? Does going and making disciples matter? Is it important? Yes, right? Yes. This passion we're talking about, this call that Jesus gives us, it matters, right? What ripens passion is the conviction that your work matters. What I'm telling you this morning is something I'm sure you've heard a million times. Your work, the work you do for Christ, your passion, it matters. It's important, right? God came and died for us. Is that not something worth being passionate about? That is our passion. So now that we've established what our passion is and how we go about obtaining that passion, right? Being with Christ, right? Learning from him. Now we can start to talk about the perseverance, all right? Perseverance. So before I go any further, um, I, I think it was a few months ago now, Ben shared a story of how he went on a hiking trip, all right, and how they got to what they thought was the top, and then they looked, and there was actually way more, right? And so they decided, that they had the decision, first off, to stay, right, and not go any further, or to keep going toward their goal, to the point of why they went, right? And ultimately, they decided to keep going, and he says it was totally worth it, right? So now it's my turn to share a hiking story. Um, last summer, I went on an awesome trip to California. We went camping in a bunch of different places, uh, but we went backpacking at Big Sur, which is a mountain range, right? And we were like, we were ready. We were pumped. We had planned to hike for probably way longer than we're actually capable of, all right? And so we get going, and we hiked for what felt like all day. It was exhausting. It was hot. Our packs were not light because we had never done this before, okay? And we get to a place, and it's not a sight, but we are done. Like, it's starting to get dark. We are tapped. We're like, I don't want to hike anymore, right? So we get to this spot, and we're looking, and we have like miles and miles left to go. And so we had that same decision. Do we keep going or do we stop? Let me tell you, we did not keep going, all right? We stopped because we were, we were exhausted, we were tired, and honestly, looking at that top, we thought, even if we start going right now, what are the chances we actually make it to the top? Like, we're just going to stop later on down the road, and where we are right now, it's pretty, you can see the ocean, like, this is good, let's just stop. Like, we might not even make it, so let's just stop, right? This is where we get to another one of my Google definitions, persevere. So this is what it means to persevere according to Google, Okay. Persevere means to continue in a course of action even in the face of difficulty or with little or no prospect of success. This was us. Let me tell you, we did not persevere, all right? We didn't even try. We just stopped, all right? But this is what it means to persevere, to continue in a course of action even when it feels like you're facing failure, when it feels like there is no other option other than to fail. You continue you continue on, right? So this is another thing that I know Ben mentioned last week, but I wanted to share the story with you this week. 
it's Paul and the disciples, and they're going place to place to place spreading the gospel, right? Um, and they're doing all this good work, but they get kicked out of, like, everywhere that they go. And not just like, hey, you know, you can leave now. It was like, leave, don't ever come back, or else we're going to kill you, okay? They were not welcomed back, right? Uh, but they kept going. And so, Acts 14 is what I'm going to read for you this morning. Uh, verse 19 But Jews came from Antioch and Iconium. These are places that they have already been, all right? And having persuaded the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. This is the point where I would stop. This is the point where I would say, yeah, there is no hope of, um, like, winning this, you know? I'm done, especially if I nearly died, okay? I didn't nearly die on this hiking trip, although I thought that I might have been, okay? I was fine. But Paul was nearly stoned to death. They thought he was dead. They drug him out of the city. Continuing on. But when the disciples gathered about him, he rose up and entered the city. And on the next day, he went on with Barnabas to Derbe. When they had preached the gospel to that city, maybe. Okay, maybe not. I'll read it the rest from here, I guess. There it is. <laughs> they had preached... The gospel in that city and had made many disciples, thank you, uh, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. This is crazy. Like, do we actually think about what they did? They were nearly killed at like every place they went. So much so people were following them just to convince the next city, like, hey, kick them out. Just get rid of them. Like, just stone them. And so they were nearly killed and they go back. They say, no, wait, we're not done. And it doesn't matter if it seems like we're going to fail. It doesn't matter if it seems like there's no hope of success. We're going back. And they did. And they made disciples. They made disciples. Paul knew what it meant to persevere. But let me tell you, the reason that I stopped hiking, the reason I didn't persevere is because I didn't have endurance. Here's another word, endurance. To endure, this is the Google definition, it means to suffer patiently. Not even joking. That's what it said, all right? Endure means to suffer patiently. Patience is the capability to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Whew. What a definition for you. Endurance. What does it mean? It means to suffer without getting angry or upset. To suffer without complaining. Right? Again, this hiking trip. I promise you, I was complaining the entire time. You know? I felt like a child, like a toddler right? And we, all of us were. We we're like, oh, my feet hurt. I'm tired. It's hot. I don't want to do this anymore. Like, we were upset, and we did not want to continue. We did not have endurance, and we did not persevere because of that, right? But to endure, to have endurance, means to suffer without getting angry or upset. Favorite definition I've ever given. To suffer without getting angry or upset. Let me read you some more scripture. All right, last bit of scripture I'll read you. Romans 5, verse 3 now. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that our sufferings produce endurance, right? When we suffer, when we struggle, we are able to endure through that. When we have endurance, right? That endurance that we're talking about, being able to suffer without getting angry or upset, it produces character, and character produces hope. Hope in God. Hope that it's okay, all right? Hope that you're going to get through it. What it means to persevere, right? What it means to persevere is understanding that even when there is little to no prospect of success, even when you feel like you are suffering, don't get angry, don't get upset, and understand that you have hope in God 
that God's going to get you through it. We can persevere because of that, right? Knowing that we have hope in God. God's got it. God's going to get us through it, right? Even if I felt like didn't, even if I didn't feel like hiking longer, I could have having hope that God would carry me to the top, right? I can hike as long as I need to knowing that God will carry me to the top. God will carry me, right? Paul, the disciples, they're nearly killed and drug out of these places, right? They had perseverance. They had endurance. They weren't complaining. They weren't angry. They weren't mad, right? In fact, they went back because they persevered. They understood that it doesn't matter if it seems like we're not going to succeed because these people's souls are so much more important. They were so much more important even than their own lives. And they had hope in God. Hope does not put us to shame, right? This is what it means to persevere. So we need two things. Perseverance and passion. So now that we've talked about those, now we can really explain what it means to be tenacious, right? I read this earlier, but I'm going to read it again to you. Maybe. There we go. Romans 5 again, verse 6. For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's where I'm going to stop. While we were still sinners, remember? While we were still living in death, God, life, came into the world and died for, for us, right? This was our passion. So again, two things, all right? Passion and perseverance. And then we get this, tenacious, which again, I'm going to give you the definition, is to not readily, not readily relinquishing a position, principle, or course of action to be determined. Do you understand what that means now? to not readily relinquish a position, principle, or course of action, to not easily give up, to be determined? Do we understand what that means? Are we starting to get it, right? To have perseverance, to have passion, to not give up, to not get angry, to not get upset, right? Even when it feels like we are suffering, to understand that we have hope in God, that we have hope that God's got us. God's going to carry us to the end, right? And so we don't easily relinquish our position, we don't easily give up. We are determined. So the question I'm asking you this morning is two things. Do you have passion? Are you passionate about what God has done? Are you passionate about what Jesus did for you? I think that's a question we got to ask ourselves daily. Are you passionate about God? Are you? And once you've realized that passion, once you have that passion... Do you have perseverance to continue? Do you have the endurance to continue? Do you have perseverance? Because it's not until you get both of these things that you are going to have tenacity. To be tenacious, which again is what we're talking about. To be tenacious is to be these two things. To be passionate about what God has done in your life. And to understand that you can persevere even in the face of death even when it seems like the only option is failure. You know how many stories in the Bible they stared at failure in the face and over, overcame that? You know how many times that happened? I feel like I could stand up here for hours and just give stories in the Bible where they persevered even when it seemed like failure was the only option, right? Acts is the story that I'm using this morning. They were thrown out of cities and almost killed but they had perseverance because they understood that their hope was in God. They were tenacious. They understood what it meant to be tenacious. Again, we cannot easily give up. We often, I feel like we often tend to give up, right? Things get hard, and we like to use the verse that says, uh, shake the sand off your sandals, right? Like, just walk away from it. It's okay. You can't minister to them? Just walk away. Did the disciples walk away? They were nearly stoned to death. 
did they walk away? No. Because again, they understood how important it was to minister to those people. They understood where their passion was. They were passionate about God, right? Don't easily give up because your mission, your goal, Jesus' is called to go and make disciples, guess what? It's so much more important. It's so much bigger, right? It's so much bigger than my ability to hike up that mountain. It was more important than the disciples' own lives, right? That is how we're able to persevere. This is what tenacity means. So again, I'm going to ask you, all right, before I dismiss you, I want you guys to ask these two questions. And not just now, not just today, okay? But through your weeks, ask yourself these two questions each day. Are you passionate about what God has done in your life? Passionate enough to share it? Are you passionate enough to share God's word? And are you able to persevere even when it seems like the only option is failure? Are you able to persevere? Do you have the endurance? Let's pray. God, this morning again, we thank you for bringing us here. God, that we get to come here and we get to be with one another. God, and be in your presence. God, and and sit with you. God, I just ask that you would be working in us this week. God, that you would show us what it means to be passionate about you and you would show us what it means to persevere. God, to have the endurance. God, be with us. Work in us daily so we could understand what it means to be tenacious. God, we thank you for all things that you do. In your name, amen. You're dismissed.